In statistics, we often try to better understand a population by studying a sample. You see, usually we can't actually get all the data for the entire population, but we can look at the data for a sample. We often assume that the population is normally distributed, of, and there can be many reasons for us to make that assumption. The purpose of this video is to look at ways that the sample can support the claim or uh, d disagree with the claim that a population is normally distributed. Here's an example of a normal distribution curve. The mean in this case is 100 and the standard deviation is 10. As with any probability distribution, the normal distribution tells us the probability of picking uh, of selecting a number at random between any two values. So here between 75 and 85, this area under the curve represents the probability of, of picking one of those numbers at random. Uh, that percent, that blue area is slightly over, just barely over 6% of the total area under the curve. So there's a 6% chance of picking a value between 75 and 85. In contrast, this green area going from 95 to 105, that, that green area under the curve is a little over 38%. So there's more than six times the probability of picking a number between 95 and, a, and a 105 in a normal distribution with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 10 than there is of picking a number between 75 and 85 in that same distribution. So let's switch over to our studio and we can look at some details here. There's our distribution with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 10. Now we would expect when we do a sample to get more numbers closer to 100 and fewer numbers out to the outside. We'd also expect that, that our sample would be somewhat symmetrically distributed and that would, there'd be very few outliers. So let's do some experiments. I'm not sure how well the code will be readable in the video, but here's the idea. We're going to, to pick at random 200 items from a normal distribution that has a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 10. That is, we're going to pick one 200 items from this normal distribution. Then we're going to look to see if there's any outliers. That is, is there anything uh, less than 70, that's three standard deviations below the mean, or greater than a 130, that's uh, three standard deviations above the mean. And we know that they're in a normal distribution, that 99.7% uh, uh, of all the the population is within three standard deviations of the mean. So that would be unusual if we get any outliers, but we're going to keep track of how many outliers we've got, and then we'll just make a histogram of everything that's not an outlier, and that's what this uh, plot is going to do. So there we are, running that code, and sure enough, this distribution is very symmetrical. There was one outlier in that particular sample. Let's run it again because uh, things change each time that you run it. Uh, again, it's certainly mounded shaped. It's not quite as symmetrical as that first one. We were just really lucky on that one. Uh, there's another one and another one. Notice that the outliers, there's usually very few outliers. Uh, one, two, or three is, is the most that we're getting when we're doing this sample. But all of those histograms uh, look very much mound shaped. <clears throat> so we would expect that if we took a sample from a normal distribution, that the histogram of that sample should be relatively normally distributed and that there should be very few outliers, uh, usually no more than one or two. Occasionally, when we do this, you'll notice that we get three. So we're doing a different sample each time, plotting the histogram associated with that. So that gives us a feel for what's happening there. Notice that there were two things that we were expecting to see if we take a sample from a normal distribution. The histogram will be mound-shaped and that there'll be very few outliers, uh, never more than three in, 
in the samples that we took so far today. So while we're looking for evidence of normality, let's look at another f uh, function in R called the QQ -Q -Q norm plot, the quantile-quantile norm plot, um, and see what that happens. The code that we're going to do here, we're going to uh, uh, pick uh, 200 points again at random from the distribution that's normally distributed with a mean of, of 10 and a standard deviation of... Uh, uh, with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 10, uh, then we're not going to need to use either one of these. So let me just uh, comment them out. And then we'll just do a QQ plot and get a feel for what that looks like. So let's run that. The, the way the QQ plot works is the on on this axis it's going to show us what the sample quantiles are. It's going to look at those 200 points and calculate within that sample what the quantile value of each one of those points are if they're in the the 70th percentile or the uh, okay uh, and then the it will also look at the theoretical quantiles that is in that with that sample, suppose that we looked at the standard devia the mean and the standard deviation of the sample and and looked at these scores in a distribution that had that mean and standard deviation. And so each one of these little circles here represent one of the two hundred points. If that line is very close to a straight line, then there's evidence that we've got a uh, normal distribution. Let's uh, run this uh, a few times and see what happens. The, each time the line varies because of the sample, but you'll notice that generally it's pretty much in a straight line when we're sampling from a normal distribution. So let's edit the script and see what happens if we sample from a different distribution. We won't look at many examples here, but let's randomly sample from a uniform distribution, 200 points, and we want to sample from a, a score of, of 70 up to a score of 130. I think that's what we were doing before. Um, and let's look at normal plot the QQ plots of those. Okay, so we're going to run that sample. So notice that now we're getting that very much not linear. And so that QQ plot gives us evidence whether we're sampling from a normal distribution or not. So let's re-edit the script and look at things one, just one more time real quickly. Okay, so here we've adjusted the script. Now we're going to sample 200 elements from a uniform distribution uh, that's, that ranges from 70 to 130. And then we're going to build the uh, histogram uh, for that. And uh, so let's begin to run that. So those are what... It's not, un it's not surprising that the sample looks somewhat like a uniform distribution. Okay. So we looked at three things that the normal distribution, that the sample might give evidence for the distribution being normal. Histogram should generally turn out to be mound shaped if the sample is taken from a normal distribution. There should be very few outliers. Remember when we were running that, we were usually finding zero outliers, occasionally one or two, and very seldom as many as three. And finally, the QQ norm plot of the sample should be nearly linear. Okay, that's it.